Welcome back to another one of our videos. Today we are talking about 10 tips and tricks to maximize your earnings with DoorDash. If you guys are new dashers, pay attention. Hopefully you can take some of this and put it into your own daily work, figure out what works for you. If you guys are seasoned dashers, let me know in the comments if I am accurate on these tips and tricks. They work for me, they may not work for everybody. But all I'm trying to do is tell you this is what I've learned after two years of doing DoorDash. Over 6,000 deliveries actually now. This is what I've learned. The first tip I have for you guys to maximize your earnings with DoorDash and all the other gig apps is use multiple apps. There will be times where DoorDash is not busy, but Uber or Grubhub or Instacart is really busy for that hour. And if you're not signed up for multiple apps, you're gonna miss out on that opportunity to be making money on those apps. And that hour, you won't be making any money. Right now, I have Uber, DoorDash, and Grubhub turned on. I have three food apps on at a time. When I do do multi-apps, some people are wondering what multi-app is. It's just turning on Uber, DoorDash and Grubhub at the same time, accepting orders that will be going in the same direction. So if you see two good paying orders, but they're going opposite directions, you probably shouldn't take those orders. Just take the better of the two. And if you've already accepted one that's a little bit lower, just take it and let somebody else get that good order on the other app. My next tip is don't take orders that are less than $1.50 per mile. That is for my market. It should depend on what market you're in. You can set that to a higher number per mile. Set your own number per order that you're never gonna go under. That way you'll know your profit. In any market, going under a dollar per mile will never be worth it. So don't take those orders. Any orders that are going more than five miles, I like to raise that number of 150 to two dollars per mile or more it is going further but if it's highway miles you're going to get there faster and not use as much gas because cars get better gas mileage on the freeways you'll have to learn your market learn what works for you what what's going to be profitable for you if you want to change these numbers for yourself just set a reasonable number that you're going to be able to make profit on tip number three do not take no tip orders there will be plenty of other orders that will come to your phone that'll be higher paying and it'll be way more worth it than that if you're taking those no tip, no tip orders, you're not going to be profitable. Unfortunately, but fortunately, there are drivers out there that are willing to take those orders. They are not very educated and informed, so they don't know that that's not profitable. Or maybe they are somebody who's struggling to make money and they think that those $2.50 orders will help them make some good money, but it's never going to be profitable. I recommend stay away from those orders, never touch them. Other people will pick them up. If you're ever scared, should I pick this order up? No. Better one will come through. There are some uninformed dashers that will pick it up. You'll be able to make money while that person's not making money. Tip number four, avoid slow restaurants. In a lot of markets, they are the same restaurants that are slow. You'll have to drive around and figure out for yourself. Memorize which restaurants will prioritize your order and which restaurants really don't care about the online orders. Avoid them at all costs. These restaurants will slow down your hourly pay because you're going to be sitting there waiting for these orders for about 20 to 30 minutes sometimes. They're not worth it. Some places that are slow, I know the manager, talk to the manager, be like, hey, can you guys get this order done real quick? And they say, yeah, of course, we'll, we'll get that order done for you. Be friendly. When you go to restaurants, be friendly with the staff be friendly with the workers and they'll get to know you. They'll get to know what kind of person you are. They'll like to work with you. They'll like to see your face when you come into the restaurant. If you're happy, you're being good to them. You're not complaining. They'll, they'll like you and most likely work on your orders when you get there. They'll say, hey, what order do you have? They know me by name. So they just say, hey, John, what, what order do you have? And I tell them what order I have and they get it. They start working on it. And it's really nice to know the managers or you're not gonna know the manager in every case, but do go in there, be friendly with the staff and the staff will recognize and you will be familiar, a familiar face to them. Hopefully it's a good familiar face and they'll want to help you and work on the orders. Whenever I go into Starbucks, they offer me a free coffee, free food, because I go in there all the time and I'm happy. I'm not complaining about anything, even when they have slow times. If you know that a restaurant is extremely slow and they won't get your order out, don't go with them. Once in a while, they get a big rush of people coming in at the same time. You gotta give them some, cut them some slack. They are doing their best to get those orders out. So yeah, you just gotta go to the restaurants, figure out which ones are slow every day and which ones are just slow some of the time. For me, 
Wendy's always slow. Popeye's always slow. Taco Bell always slow. So it's going to be different in every market, but those are the three main ones that I've heard other people talk about. Tip number five is avoid as much downtime as possible. So if you can be accepting orders on a, another app, take it. Part of the other tip I gave, have multiple apps on. I know not, it's not always possible to avoid that downtime, but as much as what's in your control, avoid all that downtime. If I am having downtime, I work on a video like this, or I do have a journal um, that I journal in every day. Always be working on something that's going to better yourself. That way, when you do have downtimes, it's not as much as a, as much of a letdown. You just get to do work on videos, or you get to work on your journaling, making yourself better. Tip number six is do not take high mileage orders unless they are paying you two dollars a mile or more or unless you're in the large order program in the large order program you do have a lot of hidden tips there are indicators like the item count and all that stuff that will let you know it's going to be a higher paying order i am part of the large order program i've gotten multiple big orders if you're not in the large order program already i recommend joining it i am doing a giveaway at 500 subscribers i'm going to be giving away a brand new catering bag if you or anybody you know is trying to join the large order program hit me up in the comments down below put uh maybe a salad emoji salad emoji in the comments down below anybody that does that will be entered into the giveaway for when we hit 500 subscribers in the majority of cases if i have a high mileage order and it doesn't indicate to me that it's going to be a high pay or like a catering order i've tried those orders they've never been higher so i do recommend if you're not in a large order program or it's not a large order indicator. I would not take those orders because they're not going to be higher. You will have to come back to your area. Keep that in mind when you're doing those orders. Tip number eight is join the pizza program. If you're not able to join the large order program, I will link a video up here, I believe, up here or up here. I don't know. Joining the pizza program video up there. If you're not able to join the large order program, you can go to any pizza restaurant. They'll give you a free bag. You'll use that bag to submit a picture of your pizza bag and they should be able to add you to the pizza program that way. It is kind of like the large order program. It just sends you large pizza orders. I would recommend joining the pizza program. I am in both of those programs. I'm in the large order and the pizza program. Double for me, yay. If you like seeing big tip, high paying orders, join both of those programs. I guarantee you, you'll see at least one big order every day. Number nine is learning your market, learning what restaurants and what areas will have the highest paying orders. Say your, your area has a mall or your area has like an area with a lot of restaurants figure out what time those restaurants are going to be busy. If you know what, what time that rush hour is for those restaurants, you can know to avoid those restaurants. If that area is not going to be paying you good at that time, leave the area, go find a new area to be working in while that area is not going to be paying you very good. And tip number 10 I have for you guys is give great customer service um, to the customers and treat their food good. All of us dashers, we have a bad name because there are a select few that like to either steal the food when there's no tip or they like to leave bad service don't put the food in the hot bag or stuff like that i recommend just so that all of us dashers can have a good reputation do your best when you're dropping off those orders treat it like it's gold you're getting paid for that order and if you are somebody who chooses to take those no tip orders hold on hold on if you're somebody who chooses to take those no-tip orders, that's on you. You took that order. You should still treat that order with respect. Put it in a hot bag. Treat the customer with respect. I do know Dashing Trader, his account's been banned now, removed from the internet, hacked, something like that. I knew. I do know Dashing Trader would confront the customers, but he did everything in his power to make sure that food got there in the right, in the good condition, right condition. He had a hot bag and everything. All he was doing is trying to inform the, the customers, we don't really make money if we take those no-tip orders. I don't have a problem with what he did there. I would never do that, but I'm glad that he informed some of the uh, customers. If you're one of those people that accept no tip orders, treat them with respect, be good. That's it for all my tips that I've given you guys. If you're a dasher and I've missed anything, leave them in the comments down below. I will respond to any comments. That's it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one and drive safe out there, guys.